Hello friends, welcome to this week's vlog. This week we are talking about the three hardest parts about serenity school. Obviously this is just my opinion, but these are the three things that I thought really made these last three years hard. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Melissa. I am a senior student registered nurse anesthetist. I graduate in less than two months, which is super exciting. But now that I'm getting towards the end of this crazy journey that I've been on, I'm kind of reflecting back on just what these last three years have been and things that I think would be helpful to share with people who are either trying to maybe go to CRNA school eventually or they're thinking about it just to kind of shed some light on my experiences and stuff like that. If you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to follow along with more videos like this and then I also post just some different like weekly and daily vlogs just like day and week in the life. This is Chip, he's gonna come in and out as well. I'm gonna start with what I think is the number one hardest part about CRNA school, which is dealing with all the different personalities that you have to deal with. I'm talking about your professors, the other students that are in the program with you, and I think worst of all is the CRNAs that you have to be with every day. I have met some of the coolest people in this program, some of the best, smartest, really caring, compassionate people. Um, a lot of the CRNAs that I worked with, I would trust them with my life and I learned so much from them. But there are also others who have been so disrespectful, just have torn me down and really made days really hard that didn't have to be. You'll find that if you have done any type of clinical and you're dealing with different people and personalities, it really determines your day. And the days that I could go in and choose my cases, I was way more apt to choose a room based on the person I was going to be with all day than the cases that were going on. So yeah, getting berated by people and just talked down to and really um, beaten down in ways that I can't describe because you're learning all these new things and you don't know, you don't know anything when you're going in and you're just trying to be safe and it's already scary. So when people are just not, I don't wanna say mean, but I don't know, the way that they treat you can be very, very difficult. And then professors, I am fortunate in my program that my professors are all amazing. They really, really care about not only you doing well in the program, but just you in general as people. Um, I've gotten to go out in social settings with my professors and I really have been so blessed, but I'm sure that there are some programs where it's not like that. Um, but yeah, that part. And then the students. So there's probably a handful of students in my class, I'm not gonna say a handful, just a couple that really were hard to deal with and you can't choose your classmates and you are around these people a lot, especially at first, once you get into clinical, it's not as much, but um, you have to listen to these people all the time and as your patient starts to wear down and you get further along, it's hard to kind of hold your tongue all the time, um, but you have to. And so, yeah, dealing with just a variety of um, personalities was one of the hardest things. The second hardest part I think is just balancing school and home life. Really balancing life, clinical, and studying. So I didn't realize with my program that I was going to have to travel so much. I knew that I might have to do a little bit of traveling but there was only one clinical site that was actually close to my house. So I had to go hours away for clinical, I had to leave the state for clinical, I did two months out of sight in Georgia, and I really got a lot actually from all the traveling, so it was a good and bad thing. Like I loved getting to go to this variety of sites, I got so many good experiences, but it was hard because I have a dog, so my parents had to watch my dog a lot, and it was hard on them, it was hard on me, that part. So imagine if you have a family, um, like I'm fortunate it was <laughs> that I really didn't have that much of that part to worry about, but I didn't talk to my friends for a long time. Um, I. You know, you mess, you, there's a potential to really um, hurt a lot of the relationships that you have just because you have to kind of fall off the earth for a little bit and just be focused on yourself. It's the most selfish that you're ever gonna have to be, I think, is during this time. And that's hard, and sometimes relationships and friendships won't survive that. And then once you start clinical, you're in clinical, at least in my program. I know some aren't as intensive, but we're in clinical 40 hours a week. So you're basically working full time, still having to study and pass exams. So that balance of work, life, clinical, studying, maintaining friendships and relationships, and just maintaining your own mental health is so difficult. Yeah, so keeping my mental health in check and being able to find ways to navigate um, the dynamics 
of being in Sierra Nevada school was definitely very, very difficult. And then the third hardest part is actually just the material itself. So learning anesthesia, anesthesia is not easy. I had to, I'm not a science person and there's a lot of science in anesthesia. <laughs> I should have known, I mean, I knew, but I thought it would be worth it. So one of the things you have to learn is the actual chemical composition of the anesthetic vapors that we're giving. So this is a molecule of sevaflurane. So that's what the molecule looks like. And then this is the actual name of it. Fluoromethyl 222 trifluoro one trifluoromethyl ethyl ether. So you have to be able to see that molecule, identify what it is, or you could be given the name, like see before and draw the molecule, or you might have to write out that whole long name that I just said. And that's just one little part of it. But learning like gas laws, chemi like all these like crazy chemistry things, um, the pharmacology, you have to know. If you know what a G protein coupled receptor is, you know. <laughs> you have to know like the whole, all the different systems in the body, how the anesthetics interact with those systems, every different patho. You have to know the whole cardiac system, respiratory system, you, the airway, all the nerves of the airway. You have to know how to do spinals and epidurals. So all these things, you have to have such a crazy knowledge of anatomy and physiology and just, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So I understand why it's three years of <laughs> needing to learn all this stuff. And then it also gets a little complicated because the stuff that you learn about in class and read in the books doesn't always translate exactly into clinical. So you will have a situation that comes up and you'll know the textbook answer, but the textbook answer is not actually what you do in the clinical setting. So it's a lot of distinguishing what you're learning and actually being able to apply it into what you're doing. So it's really hard to explain the complexity of it, but the actual knowledge that <laughs> you have to have and be able to translate into practice is is crazy. I mean, the things we do, we, can, we just pick up drugs and we give them to patients. There's no second guessing or checking or anything like that. Um, so you really have the, the ability to kill someone like that, which is insane and it's a lot of pressure. So you have to have that that knowledge and be 100% confident that you know what you need to know and that you can apply it. I'm not trying to scare anyone with these three things, but I really just wanted to shed some light on what I thought were the three hardest parts about CRNA school. But I think with all the hard things and the difficult things, it is 100% worth it. I am so happy that I chose this as a career and I can't wait to start on my own soon here in the next couple of months. Um, I'm excited to take boards and to show myself, really prove to myself that, you know, it's not imposter syndrome. I, or that it, I don't know, I feel like I have imposter syndrome sometimes, but um, I'm excited to show myself that everything I learned, I, you know, I'm meant to do this and it's, it's all gonna come together in the end. So I'm excited to take boards and put my knowledge to the test and earn you know, that, that degree that I've been working so hard for. But yeah, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. I'm happy to go more into detail on any of these things. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. Like I said, subscribe if you're not already. We post videos on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. so you can fall asleep with Coca-Fall Diaries. Good night. <laughs>